Hey everybody, my name is Lauren Moore and I am a digital animator and XR developer at Redpoint Digital. And today I'm going to show you how to do a dynamic chain simulation using InCloth in Maya. Let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything that I have here. And what you're going to do before you do anything is make sure that you go up to modify and you're going to freeze transforms everything that you have. And the reason why I did that is if they were off by any bit of decimal point and I wanted to bring it back to zero, I wouldn't be able to do that because I didn't make their transform set to zero. So here I'm able to put in zero and put it right back where it belongs. So it's just a helpful tip right away and I'm going to turn off the grid now so that you guys can see this lovely little dog tag situation going on. So I'm going to do a pin constraint. For me to find that menu, you're going to go up to this tab up here and switch to FX. And you'll see that the top bar here changes. Select the chain and the dog tag. Go up to fields and solvers. And we're going to go to pin constraint, but open up the sub menu. And we're going to make sure that we have interpenetrate selected. And we're going to hit apply. And you'll see now that there's a little X here at the top saying that these are pinned to that location. Instead of just going back up here to do the same thing and hit pin constraint or do all that stuff, you guys can actually hit G so that way you don't have to go through all these little sub menus and stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to the end cloth up here and we're going to detach the sub menu. You see how this is highlighted right here? You just click it once and it detaches the sub mini for you. We're gonna make this color link a passive collider and that means that it's not gonna be affected by the gravity, it's just gonna stay in place and you can add a passive collider to anything that's not your in cloth simulation. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select the chain dog tags or the chains and dog tags and we're gonna create an in cloth for all of those. You can see that now everything has their own little in cloths. You don't need this menu anymore, but I just want to show you what happens when you don't edit any of the attributes for the in cloths. This is what happens. Everything breaks. Pause. <laughs> let's, let's go back here a little bit in frames. Oh, that happened quick then. So yeah, as you can see, literally my chain breaks, my lovely dog tags collide, crash, their polygons break, they're, they're just, it's just bad. So let's fix that. So how we fix that is we need to go to, so let's make sure we have our rigid body here, all of our in class selected, and we're going to go to Windows, General Editors, and Attribute Spreadsheet. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to shape keyable. We're going to make sure first that the rigid body shape up here has the same self collision flag as the rest. And you can do that by clicking and pressing three and it changes to the face. Now you can click that and hit two and it changes to the vertex edge or one does the vertex, but we're going to make sure it's set to three, which is vertex face. And first edit that we're going to make is our thickness and our thickness we're going to change that to 0.2 and I'm just going to show you roughly now what that does. So you see that things are now kind of keeping their shape, their, they have a thickness to them and as you can see in here is that stuff is still breaking, stuff is still like all the polygons are starting to shift and move and do weird things. So we're going to move down the line to stretch, compression, and bend. And we're going to change the stretch here to 500 and it's stretch resistance. So and we're going to change this one to, we could do 250 if we want, but, and then same with this, we'll do like I feel like we should actually you know what I feel like we should have that at 250 as well and we're gonna make sure that this is set to 2 and just to make sure that these shapes I mean they're they're a little poly and they're pretty rigid and we just want to make sure that all of our objects are staying the same so now if I hit play things are starting to move and do their thing 
But what we don't see is things rapidly extending, breaking. We just see that things are now bouncing back up into place. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna stop this and... Looking at our cache playback here, this is our dynamic chain simulation using InCloth in Maya, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to stay updated with Redpoint's work, please follow us at Redpoint Digital on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.